Hi gang, I am getting ready. Let me answer this question here real quick. Okay. So, I'm going to finish solder the back side. Two reasons. I've always done it that way. Um, I could leave it flat soldered, which is what you'll see with most um, panels that come from China and things like that. I think down the road and I think, okay, first off, can it be seen from the other side? Like if somebody's walking up to my entryway, will it be seen from the outside? The place where this panel is going, there's a sidewalk right on the other side. So yes, number one, it will be viewed from the other side. So I want it to look nice. Number two, um, down the road, if this panel is ever relocated, will it be viewed from the other side? Um, you never know, you know. So I have just always gotten in the habit. It cost me some time. It cost me some solder. But in the long run, I have two sides. And maybe I decide that I like the blue butterfly rough texture as the front. Or somebody that purchases this likes what I would consider the back side right now, which there's no front or back. Um, so why not just go ahead and do it? And that way both sides could be the front side if they so choose. Um, maybe they like the serrations and the, the color design better from the other side of the glass than what I originally intended it to be. So this way if I finish solder both sides of it, it's a win-win, if that makes sense. So. I do have my tablet set up, and let's see if it's posting on here. No, yep, now I've got a little bit of a delay, so um, it's not showing that I am live. Oop, there it is. Okay, so the first thing I need to do, I just finished with 50-50 on what is the back side. I'm going to call this the back side. And so I am going to take my flux brush. I haven't reloaded it with flux or anything. There's plenty of flux left over on the glass from soldering before. I'm literally just going to re-wet all of my lines with that flux. Um, I'm using Gel Flux, Classic 100 Gel Flux. It cleans really nice and easy. So I really don't care if I get flux all over my glass because I know that I can clean it off real quick and easy with either Dawn dish soap, um, a, an alcohol, Dawn combination, whatever. So my first thing I want to do is just get all of these lines refluxed again because my solder is going to stick better and flow better if I get flux on all these lines again. While I was offline, I went ahead and I did it. So I'm just showing you here that I'm just borrowing flux that was already on the glass from before. Just spreading it over all these lines. Don't need to add any more. There's plenty there. So I'm just re-wetting those lines again. And my shirt on. <laughs> and my shirt on. Jeans. You can see you coming a mile away. <laughs> All right. Finish solder. I just happened to have Eagle solder that I ordered on eBay. Everybody had been uh, really talking good things about it. I like Victory White. Canfield is supposedly the best. I just don't want to spend the extra money on something I can't see any difference in. So I've got Eagle. I've got Classic 6040. I don't have any Victory White right now, which I kind of, it's my go-to. I like it, um, but we'll see how this does. So I've got everything, um, all the bubbles or most of the bubbles had escaped as I flat soldered out of there. Time to begin um, finish soldering. I'm still using my Weller from 1970 whatever. I've got an 800 degree tip in it because I like to solder a little faster. We'll see if it keeps up. All right. Where did that go? I tend to start in one corner and work my way up and around. It really doesn't matter. 
You'll notice the main thing I do as I solder is I turn my soldering iron a lot. I will use the advantage of the heat. As I'm on my glass, if it's flat, I'm getting more heat. Or I can guide and make a nice rounded edge with, uh, with it vertically like this. So you'll notice that I'll be turning my iron quite a bit. This is how I hold my iron. I don't hold it like a pencil. I hold it, I don't hold it like this. I hold it like this. I'll have a lot more control over it. I can do a lot more with it. And the angle of it is better. I don't want to be so straight up and down like holding a pencil. And I'm more likely if I hold it like a pencil to grab it down here. And I'm not going to do that. Shut up, cat. Jeez. All right. So I'm going to just start in here. Notice I'm on the edge. I'm not using it flat. There's a bubble. If I get a bubble, just touch it, melt it, lift straight up. It'll self-level. If I'm coming in from, let me come in here, concentrate on this a little bit more and get you some tips. Got a nice little shadow there. Of course we do. Okay, when I'm doing tips, where are we? This one. A lot of points in here. You want to pull through the point. You don't want to push through it this way. You don't want to go this way because what's going to happen is that solder is going to want to jump and fill in that point there. So as I'm doing my points, I'm going to want to pull through and get a nice clean V there. Okay, so I get a nice little dab of solder going. Pull through that. Okay, this line I've already soldered, so I'm going to just stop, pause, lift straight up. When you lift straight up, you're going to get a nice finish line there. Notice I'm feeding my solder right into the iron so that I don't have to stop or anything. There's a point. I'm going to pull through the point. Okay, anytime I stop, if I need to to stop, I put it straight up. Okay, melt it into that seam, come down, pause so that it melts, and pick straight up. Now I've got a little bit of a weird little thing here, a little bump. So I'm just going to remelt that. And take it off into the seam. Sorry, I'm trying to stay as close up as I can for you. Let's see, let's do this leaf. I'm trying to find you. The leaf, where are we at? This leaf, okay. So I'm going to melt into that. If there's any bubbles, again, I'm on the back side, so this is where I want my bubbles to escape. If a bubble does appear, let me see if I can get a bubble to happen here for us. I want to stay away from that edge there. Let's see if I can get a bubble. Of course not. Okay, I'm going to melt into this seam a little bit. Start pulling. That's going to give me a nice joint there. And I'm actually, I'm literally, if you can see my hand, let me back up here. I literally, um, I could like balance my iron as I'm, I'm literally touching and uh, touching the glass. I'm not holding it away from the surface. I'm literally touching the glass. I can do this solder line literally by just dragging the tip of the iron, not even holding on to it. Okay, can you see that? The tip of it is literally sitting on the glass. Okay, 
as soon as I can get a bubble to come up and be a problem. Okay, here's one. I jog around the corner and then I pull it through. So as I came down to that point, I kind of zigged over to this seam. I kind of zigged over to that seam and then I pulled it down through. See how I backed up there to get both sides and then pull it. Get both sides and pull through. And that's going to lay that solder down nice. If you have a spot you need to fix, touch it, hold it for one second, one one thousand, pull straight up. Okay, load some solder. The other thing you can do if you've got a lot of solder built up is you can slide it straight off. Either pick straight up or slide it straight off. You don't want to paint with it. Don't be a painter. And what I mean by that is you're laying your solder down and you, you lift up and away. What's going to happen is you're going to leave a trail of solder and it's going to freeze midway. You don't want that. And that's what makes those little barbs. If you ever are cleaning and all of a sudden you like draw blood because you hit one of those little solder blobs or your towel gets snagged on it, what happened is you drug up and off when you were pulling away from the panel with your soldering iron. And that's what makes those. You always want to melt one 1000, pull it straight up. It will self-level and you'll get a really nice solder line. There's a spot that didn't want to solder. And a bubble, yay. Two and one. Now you'll notice when I hit that with the flux brush, it splattered. You never want to use your fingers because hot solder looks just like cold solder. You see that? Right here. So don't ever assume that your solder's cold. Especially the one the little ones that end up on your glass, here's one. You don't want to take your fingers and move it away because it may stick to your finger. Always use your, your um, solder or something like that. For some reason my tablet just jumped. Here we go. Okay, so if you have questions, I got my tablet set up. I'll stop every once in a while, pause and look over there. But I just want to go to town on this now. Because I want to get this done and hung. Any continuous lines as possible. Less times you stop and pick up, the more chances you are of having it create a problem. There's a rough spot, touch, pick up. One one thousand, pick up. The less you have to go over your lines again, the better. Okay, here I am. Can you see where I am? Just off camera. I have a finished solder line here, and I want to do this line. So I am literally going to melt into that line and then pull through there to start this next line. And I always want to make sure I have plenty of solder. One of the problems of bad solder is you don't use enough solder. Very rarely, if your iron is at the temperature it should be, will you have too much solder globbed up. OK, 
Okay, here's an, a bubble. See the bubble? One one thousand, pick straight up. It'll self level. Come to a joint, one one thousand, pick straight up. Still getting a little bit of air bubbles popping through there. That's okay. I'd rather have it happen here on the back. Once I get this finished solder done on the back side, when I turn it over to the front, I won't hardly have any bubble problems at all because they would have resolved themselves here on the back. And if I'm going to have a bubble, I want it to be on the back, not on the front side that I'm looking at all the time. are looking. Here we go. Really doesn't matter where you go or what you do in what order because it's all got to be done. But I generally try to stay as much in one area as I can so I don't forget a line uh, unless it's a small area. Now because I laid down that 50-50 first and did the flat solder it's giving me a nice level spot in which the 6040 is laying onto it. And it takes a hotter temperature to melt through. So I've given myself a flat surface and I've given myself a little bit of a barrier because of the 60 or the 5050 underneath there. Not so crazy about this iron, but it's what I've got to work with, so. My preferred, if I could do a 3 8 inch tip instead of the quarter inch at 800 degrees, I think I would be happier. Um, because I like the, the little bit narrower tip, but I don't have one. Okay. Now, I had just a little bit of, of um, extra solder built up right here. So what I, I did is I went into it, I melted, and then I flicked it off. Now, again, cold solder looks like hot solder. So I don't want to touch that, but I can move it over to where I want to use it and just keep on going. Flux also will... Um, sizzle a little bit depending on what kind of flux you're using. You may get like little black spots and gunky stuff. I can kind of see one right here. All that is is the flux burning. And when you wash this panel, um, where is it? Right here-ish. Right there. It's It'll just wipe off. See? It's just the flux. So don't worry if you get like weird little black splotches on your pan, a little wash off. What else can I teach you? Let's go to see these points, I think. Um, small areas I mentioned. Wipe my iron off. You don't want to get it too hot, so don't stay there too long. There's a lot of heat in the solder. Again, I'm running at an 800 degree temp. So if I've got a lot of little pieces in one area, I may just do a couple, let that heat dissipate out of it, and then go back and do some more. See how when I come to a seam, I kind of jumped over and started it, and then I went back? This is going to help me begin the seam 
again because I've got that little starting point. I back up into it and then I can go in and attach to there and pick straight up. This is what works for me. There's no right or wrong. I've just done a lot of soldering and this is what works. Okay, come to the end, pick straight up. I'm running on the edge of my iron, feeding my solder right straight into the side of it. And I am touching the glass with my soldering iron. I'm dragging it. I literally could let go of the soldering iron and just have it drag along the glass. to the end. One, two, pick straight up. Here's a bubble. One, two, or one one thousand, whatever you want to do. This one is short a little bit of solder right there. So I'm just going to add a little dot. Work it back and forth, but when I'm ready to lift, I go straight up with it. Reasons people have problems soldering, the iron's too hot and it drips through. Um, it's not necessarily that the iron's too hot. Maybe you're staying too long in a spot and it's dripping through that way. Um, or you didn't use 50-50 as a base. Remember I've got 50-50 as my flat. And now I'm finishing with 60-40. Here's a nice point. I come down, I melt, and pick straight up. Or pull straight off. I don't want to slide it. Let's go back and get this flower down here. Should have cooled down enough. Come to the end of the seam, pause, pick straight up. Another problem people have with soldering, they don't use enough solder. Your iron is going to self-level it. You really can't get a whole lot of really bad globs, and if you do, your iron's not hot enough. So low temperature and not using enough solder is probably the two biggest problems that I see people have. Let's go up here. It's just helping a little bit. Okay, just start the solder seam. Running on the edge of it and feeding it into the side. It's only going to use what it needs. Okay, I go down and I come back because I want to go on through this line here. Oh, this iron is so so cool compared to what I like. Notice when I did this line here, I kind of dipped down into the seams a little bit because I found that when I do that, it's easier for me to melt back and then go forward. And that gives me a nice, a nice point right there. See that? Go backwards a little bit and then come back and finish your lines. Okay, the same with this. So I'm almost making myself a T when I'm finishing it there. Does that make sense? I don't know.
Don't overwork a space too much because it's still very hot there because it's just laid down 800 degree solder. So if you overwork it, what's going to happen is you're going to get a drip through because the glass is retaining that heat. Especially when you have a lot of pieces that have little pieces like this all together. It's going to retain more heat because of the solder on all of those little pieces there. So if you kind of get the gut instinct that it's going to drip, it probably will. Just leave it, go somewhere else, and come back to it in a couple minutes. Okay, you'll notice I'm just, whenever I need to touch something up, I lift straight up. That is the key. Here's a bubble. One, one thousand, pick straight up. If you count to two, two thousand, that may be too, too long, I'm not sure. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, yeah. Just from experience, I knew I was pushing the heat. I don't think I do two, two thousand, I just do one, one thousand. Any questions so far? So far so good? Backwards and forwards again. Melt into that seam, lift straight up. It's a little bubble, one one thousand. go. Notice how I kind of melt into the other attaching line and then I back back out. Attaching line, attaching line, back out, and follow this on around. That's how I get a good area right there. I went up, I went up, and I pulled. literally like laying the corner of my iron the corner right here this tip is what's touching the glass and I'm feeding my solder into it and I'm dragging along the solder line it's only going to need use what it needs when I come to the end one one thousand pick straight up I'm going to get a nice clean joint you can kind of see where I've got the finished solder and where I've got the flat solder so far, so good. Thanks, Patrick. Yeah, it's my God-given gift to teach. I want to see everybody's beautiful stuff. And if I can help avoid some of the problems I've ran into the past, that's my job on earth. So thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying this. I hope you learned something. You watch again. I'm going to go up to the seam and then pull through. That gives me that really nice joint right there. Through and then continue up. For some reason, I don't know why, it doesn't matter. You can go either way, but for me, it's easier for me to pull it towards me than it is to push. Maybe it's just the way I'm used to it. It doesn't matter. Fix a bubble. Touch, one one thousand, pick it straight up. Melt into a seam. Drag it down. When I get to another seam, I need a little more solder there, sorry. We get to another seam. There we go. There's a bubble. One one thousand, pick it straight up. You're gonna get you're gonna hear this in your sleep tonight, maybe. 
Okay, see, I've got a lot of solder on there, on my iron. It's only going to use what it needs. Okay, here we go. Touch that seam. Pull it back through. If I get too much there, just pull it off. You always want to pull off straight off the line. You don't want to paint it up the line. You don't want to go... I can't even do it. I'm sorry. I can't even do it. There. Is that a good one? There's a really sharp... My exacto. Where was I? Right there. It's a really sharp point right there. Should be, if I did it right. There we go. If I had a towel and I was cleaning this, it, of course, it's not going to let me. I can't even make a mistake. I'm sorry. It won't even let me. Oh, well. You know what I'm trying to say. When you get those really sharp points, it's because you've, you've kind of picked up as you left the glass, and that's what's going to make those sharp points. But if you pick straight up, bump, straight up, you won't get those sharp points. Okay, here's a seam. I'm going to melt into it and then pull through. Bounce into this one. Keep on going in my direction. Bounce into that one. I decided I'm going to take this leaf on down. Lots of bubbles there. If I keep going over that, it's going to drip through. It's going to get hot enough. So I'm just going to leave it for a second. Let that cool off. Takes a little more heat because I do have that 50-50 flat soldered underneath. And I'm using 60-40 now. So it will take a little more for it to drip through, but you still can get a drip through. So I'm going to go back and fix this now. It's cooled off. There we go. And that's another reason why when I was doing my flat solder, it's like, go slow, let the bubbles escape. Um, where are we going next? Let's finish this one flower here. Let the bubbles escape while you're flat soldering. Because if you do that, then you won't have as many to deal with when you're finished soldering. Come into the seam, touch, one one thousand, flip straight up. I've got my tablet set up, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Every once in a while, you will see me go straight off, pull straight off the seam. And what I'm doing, rather than lifting straight up, is I'm trying to remove a little bit of excess solder. So if you ever see me kind of flick off like this, doing it this way, that's how I remove solder. Solder will only stick to your, your foil, but like you just seen right there where it wanted to stick a little bit on the glass, I just reheated it just like I was fixing a bubble or a, a section that I wasn't happy with. Again, just um, touch down, count to 1,000, lift straight up. It will self-level and give you a nice seam. Every once in a while, you'll see me turn my iron flat versus on the edge like it is now. That's just to get more heat going. Maybe the solder isn't wanting to melt as quickly as what I want it to, and so I'll turn my iron to get it to melt. Like right here, turn it. That just adds that little bit of extra heat. It's looking so pretty. This beats watching TV all to heck, huh? At least it's like positive reinforcing learning something TV. If you are watching on your TV. Bubble. Wow, we're rolling right along.
If you have any questions or wonder why I do something, just let me know. Or if you do it a different way, let me know. It would be interesting. Maybe I don't know something. Okay, notice here, when I was doing that little V, I kind of backed up into it and then kept on going because it's easier to remelt that little spot and continue on than to start in a seam. Okay, so I go along the butterfly, bounce over into this, and then continue on. Same with this, same with that. That will drip off my iron. I think it built up because I was pushing instead of pulling. Okay, here's a V, go over on that side, pull it through. A V, jump over to that side, pull it through. My gaps, um, I use foil shears and I leave 3 16 inch in between every single piece so that that solder can get down in between every piece and it makes like a if you scroll down on my page on this um, page or go to Art Attack 2 on YouTube I've got a video out there called Gaps Are Good and it explains why um, you want gaps between your pieces because you want that cobweb effect, I guess. So instead of the solder sitting on, on the surface, like it is here, just sitting there, it penetrates all the way through like H came. And it's going to make your, your panel a lot stronger. So does that answer your question about gaps? No, I, I use, um, I've, got all, I've got this actually step-by-step -step documented. Um, since we can't have classes, I thought, you know what, I'll just bring the classes to the masses. <laughs> and uh, so I've been documenting this window step by step from drawing to um, cutting, grinding, soldering, everything. It's step by step. So, you know, you, this is the way I've done it. Um, I've, I've made a lot of mistakes along my 20 year process. And I just want you guys to not have to go 20 years before you learn something that helps, I guess. So yes, gaps are good. Everybody thinks that they need their, their pieces to fit perfectly tight. I use pattern shears. I glue my foil, or I glue my pattern onto freezer paper, just to give you an overview. I cut my pieces to match the pattern that's glued onto my glass and then I grind straight to the pattern so if if I make a mistake on let's say this piece this piece is going to reflect it because my my pattern says so and so all of my pieces fit really well together usually every once in a while you'll have a bad break and I've even covered that that topic in one of the videos how to fix it or do something different. Just because the pattern was drawn that way doesn't mean I have to actually obey, obey it. <laughs> I could have cut another piece. And actually sometimes when I'm cutting out my pattern with my foil shears, if it's hard for me to cut out with my foil shears, it's going to be hard for me to cut the glass out. And so a lot of times I'll adjust a pattern as I'm cutting it out just because it's like, I can't make that cut. You know, why even try? So if I can't cut it with pattern shears easily, then obviously it's going to be difficult to cut with the glass also. 
Sorry. I keep forgetting to move you. I zoom in and then forget to move you. So yeah, the, that's one of my favorite videos that explains so much because especially beginning people, it's like, oh, I, my pieces don't fit together perfect. Um, if you leave that 16th inch gap in between every one of them, it does fit together perfect. And sometimes you might want to leave a gap. I did that. Does it actually show? Let's see. I'm trying to think of where it was. There was a piece that I wanted to leave a little thicker gap on purpose because it was a stem to a leaf. Uh, I don't know where which one it was. And so I purposefully put a bigger gap in it. I don't know. I think it was one of these leaves down here. Because it was going to be a stem, and I wanted it to look like a thicker line than just a regular lead line. Should we do the butterfly? People always ask me what's my favorite project that I've done. And it's like, oh, that's easy. It'll be my next one. <laughs> Have I ever done a project that I thought was absolutely perfect? No. I think I can always take something I've done and make it better. I have to say, I come close. Um, one of my favorite ones is the Lutheran piece. I think it's the Lutheran Church in Sunrise Beach. Um, and we did God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And for God the Father, I did, um, there was two windows for each subject. And one I did, um, Alpha and Omega, which I think is probably my all-time favorite window that I've made. Um, it was just it was just so meaningful theoretically with the Alpha Omega, Sun, Moon, Stars, Judgment. It you can see it on my portfolio page. It just it said a lot in symbolism, so I was really proud of that one. God the Father, God the Son was the middle section, which of course was Jesus. Um, Jesus and the children and the Good Shepherd, I think, was the other one. And then um, uh, it's been a, several years since I did those. And then God the Holy Spirit was kind of challenging. So I, right now I can't even think of what I did for the Holy Spirit. But they had really great um, 
ribbons and colorful design built into each one of them. Pretty neat. You'll have to go out to my portfolio and take a check. It's at artattack2.com. Kent Lutheran Church, that's who it was. Kent Lutheran Church here in Sunrise Beach. What kept wanting to say Peace Lutheran Church? It's like, no, that's a different church. Nice, stable, steady line. Oh, that one turned out nice. That's good because that's a focal point one. Little bubble there, that's okay. Fixed it. I like it when lead when solder goes like that. Yeah, perfect solder line. That happens once a window. One of the jobs that I had that I really thoroughly enjoyed because I learned the physics about glass, chemistry of glass, um, I learned just so much, is I worked at Kokomo Opalescent Glass for about six months during the winter, which was not so good. Um, they had two snow, snowstorms while I was there, over 24 inches deep. After the second one, it's like, I'm going back to Missouri. Sorry, love it here. Hate your winters. Gotta go. Sorry, I'm picking up a couple over here that didn't get done, and I'm just, while I'm seeing them, I want to finish them. But um, I did everything there. I designed windows, gave tours, um, lusted after the glass, wanted to buy the place so I could hoard it all. You know, typical stained glass people stuff. Loved giving the tours. That was so much fun. Oh, where now? I don't know. Let's go ahead and finish this, I guess. I get bored with um, straight lines. Actually, straight lines are much harder than like the flower over here with lots of little lines. I'd much rather do that. And you'll notice a lot of my designs, if you look at my portfolio, I use a lot of smaller pieces. And that's an ec economical reason for that. Because I don't have to use big sheets of glass to get a design. Yeah, it may take a little more work. But... I can use smaller pieces of scrap glass or whatever. Like the majority of this, with the exception of the background, is basically scrap glass. I didn't really have to dig into any of my um, my inventory to do it. So, whenever possible, yeah, I'll, you'll see that I use more pieces, smaller pieces, because it's just more economical for me. I don't have to have big sheets of glass in order to make a project and hope and pray and hope and pray that I don't break it or have a bad break. Why do I use 50-50 solder and then for flat soldering and then 60-40 for finish? 50-50 solder takes a higher temperature and it's a little cheaper. And so if I'm going to penetrate between the pieces with solder, it's going to use more solder, so I'm going to use the cheaper solder to begin with. And then 50-50, because it takes a hotter temperature than a 60-40, it's not going to melt through. So I'm not going to get the drip-throughs because I've got 50-50 as a barrier 
before it melts all the way through. And I have to actually get hot enough to melt the 50-50 also. So that gives me a nice flat surface with the 50-50 in order to build up the 60-40. The 60-40 also, I think, cleans a little bit better, a little shinier polisher or whatever. It could be all in my mind. But, um, and it flows a little nicer for the, for the finish. Good question. So 50-50 kind of acts as my barrier so it doesn't drip through. Finish this. I've got a, a few minutes delay, so if you ask a question, it takes me a minute. That's why, because it's actually not showing up on my tablet over there for a few minutes after you ask it. This iron actually is a little cooler than I would normally work, so I'm fighting it a little bit. I usually solder really fast. I would have had this done if I, my other iron would be working. Yes, yeah, so I am using 6040 on top of the 5050 base. And it is Eagle, which is everybody has been talking about on eBay. I think I got 10 rolls for 100 bucks, $10 a roll cheaper than my wholesaler. So yeah, duh, why not? And yeah, it works just as well as any of the other brands. I like it. It seems to be working pretty darn good. It's the first time I've used it. I'm usually a Victory White solder user, just because that's what my supplier always had in hand. Um, about the same price. Okay, again, bubbles, one one thousand, pick it straight up. Now, this is also the back, so I'm taking my time to make sure that all of those bubbles are escaping out of here because once I turn it over and finish solder the front side, I'm going to go really fast because I don't have to fight any of those bubbles. They've already been contended with back here. Does that make sense? I can load this soldering iron up as much as it will take, and it's only going to lay down what it needs. I use 60, um, 70, 730 seconds, get my words right, foil. On some of the places, I could have used different thickness foil, um, like, for instance, the flower corner over here, that tiny little flower. I could have used a smaller foil, but I just, just had it in hand and kept on going. Um, and it would have just showed more glass is all. That's the only difference, really. Oops. Need a second to reposition my tablet here. Okay. Once in a while, I'll just wipe my tip off with a wet sponge, natural sponge, not a synthetic one. They'll burn up. Where are you looking, the flower? And the butterfly, and the butterfly, and okay, good, you can see all this. I love this little blue butterfly's texture. It's granite, Kokomo granite. I wish I would have put that as the front but I'm not redoing it, so too bad. Too bad, so sad. Not gonna happen. Not tearing it apart. Somebody can enjoy it from the outside. Yeah, I just keep feeding that solder right into the side of the iron. The less times I stop, go in, keep on going. Go in, back up, catch that bubble, keep on going. And notice how I went in here, because then I can just continue right from there. It's easier than continuing from the seam. I'm going to pick all three of those lines up and pull through there. Because that was kind of a weird little... 
weird little spot there. Lots of things going on in that corner. So I just picked it all up. If I have too much solder or if I feel like I have too much solder, I can just pull it off. Like that. And because I had started into that seam before, I just melt that and then continue on. So that's why you'll see I'll go partially, just like not even a quarter of an inch, but into the next seam because it's so much easier at that point. Give me a little solder dot. I want to use you. It's so much easier just to, to begin from there to continue on through. Here's another weird thing. I want to pull away from those points because if I go this way, it, that solder is going to want to fill up that corner. And I don't want that. So I want to pull through that V. Where are you? Where am I? What am I doing? I'm down here. <laughs> Let's stay up here where you guys are, huh? Just yell at me when I do stupid stuff. See how much is easier it is when I already start into that line to continue on from there? Just, it just makes it easier to continue and get a good seam right there. Versus like that, having to start at the very in in the get in the corner. Every once in a while, you'll see me stop and back up real quick. That's because a bubble popped up, and so I just. While I was there and my solder was hot, I just back up and pop that bubble. See me slide off of that? That way I maintain the uh, solder on my iron. If I just pick it up, it's going to want to stay on the panel. And it may be too much there. Every once in a while I will slide off sideways. I don't slide off the lead line, the solder line. I'll slide off towards the glass part. I'll this way. Not not this way, not following the line. Because that'll keep those that's that's where those sharp little barbs come from. Hot solder looks just like cold solder, so even if you've got a solder dot sitting on your glass, don't flick it with your finger, because it may stay on your finger. <laughs> oh, where are you looking? Can you see all my... Yeah, you can see there. Okay, interesting little seam, so I'm just going to dop into all of them. Patrick, you can, um, and that's actually what I did on that one is I just cut with the X-Acto knife so that on the front side I had a little more foil showing or more glass showing because I cut the foil away. And the glass I used, in, no, that's Spectrum. Sometimes Kokomo glass or a handmade glass is a little thicker, so the 3 30 seconds Three sixteenths. Sorry, the three sixteenths foil um, actually won't cover the whole side. So yeah, the exacto knife is actually a, a better, safer way to cut away some of it. You can also use that, um, like on the edge of the butterfly. If I wanted to do a little bit of like the little black dots on here, 
I could have used a foil overlay with either paint on it or cut out, punched out some holes so that you can do a lot with foil. A lot of decorative stuff. If you're doing decorative overlays with foil, it's best that you solder it on your table or on a, a different piece of glass before you attach it onto your stained glass because if you're foiling especially a big surface and doing a lot of solder on top of it, it will crack your glass. So do your decorative soldering on your foil first and then apply it onto your panel. Been there, done that. Okay, how are we looking? I think I found a bubble up there. Who's playing with what? I've got a cat here playing with a piece of tea left. Something. So what do you all like to make? Panels and catchers, three-dimensional, all of the above. We have a phantom cat over here We're playing with something. I can't find the cat. It could be a piece of metal. My hand's right in the way, isn't it? Duh. Oh, this is killing me going this slow. But that's okay. That's what the iron will do. Let's see if we can move you so you can see better. You're looking at me sideways. Example of why I pulled off. I didn't want to use the rest of that solder there. So I pulled straight off versus picking up like there. One one thousand, pick straight up. Little little dent, so I'll add a little more solder. There we go. off because I didn't want to leave all that extra solder there. You hear the sizzles? Oh, look at that good bubble. Yay! For those of you that are just joining us, I'm doing my finished solder on the back side. Alright, fixing a bubble. One one thousand, pick straight up. One one thousand, pick straight up. It'll self level. So anytime you need to fix something, the whole key is picking straight up. And see how nice that is then? You don't have to go over it and over it and over it trying to get the perfect solder line. And I want it, seeing these bubbles come out here is great because I know it's not going to happen on the front side when I go to solder. So I'm just happy, happy, happy seeing those bubbles come out now because they got to come out sometime and I'd rather have them come out now than when I'm trying to get my front looking really, really nice. My iron is slowing down.
choice of iron that I've been trying to work with. The choice is my actual go-to iron because I can run it at a higher temperature and I can go faster. Oh, like this, yes. I think I've actually, it was a new one that I hadn't used before and my tip kept coming loose yesterday when I was trying to use it. So this is going to work. I've got it set for four and a half. I'm going to crank it up to about six and get this, this side finished. What are you seeing? You're seeing that corner butterfly and the top leaf. Okay. So this is one of the cheapest soldering irons you can use, the choice. It's my go-to, like I said. Um, I think they run about $30. They run on a rheostat. The tip on it, you can see, is narrower, so I feel like I can get more control out of it and more heat, instant heat. I'm going to have to run it on the Salamonia block here and see if I can get that tinned nice. Just turned it up just a little bit, so we'll see if, see if I can get the temperature going on it. Going and flowing. I'm holding at an angle just to let that heat build up. There we go. This is more like my speed. Not quite yet. It's not quite warm. I call these my disposable irons because by the end of the year, I just buy a new one because I can't get the tip out to replace it. They're perfectly fine irons. If you can get the tip out, it's great. But I got a box of three of them over there right now. Okay, that's an interesting little situation right there. Looks like the foil had pulled away or something. would be a good little fix-it trick. Yeah. I don't know if you can tell the difference. I certainly can. so I can go I don't think it's quite I can hear that rattle I don't think the bit's quite all the way on it yet temperature getting up on this one now so I can move along also noticing that I'm just going to re-wet this a little bit it's been sitting over here for an hour kind of drying on myself so I'm just going to re-wet that flux that's already there
So I'm going to get a bubble. It's usually if you're in the point where that air is trying to escape. Tin that there. Now if I do have to go over a line again. Make sure you're melting it all the way in. You're not just putting another layer on top. Sun is sending me messages. See how that is. Sticking on my soldering iron right there. Wanting to stick. Yeah, I think this tip has still got some issues. Have you all had the same problem that I've had at times? Get all done cleaning it and realize you missed a line? That stinks. And of course, my soldering iron's already cold and put away by then. Andy, I'll call you back in a minute. We've got like 10 minutes to go here, if even.
Sorry, responded to my son. He's up in Iowa. I told him to jump over to Facebook and uh, watch us solder. Looks like he's got a window he wants made with a bear. Okay, weird little point. So as I come to that point, I pull through it. Sometimes it's hard to tell from this angle if it's an air bubble or flux. You have to go back and touch up. Make sure you're not just going on the surface as you remelt, that you're melting it all the way through. Because that's also what makes those sharp little barbs or layers that peels off as you're cleaning it. Tink! Thanks for falling on a theme. How much faster I can move on this one? Tip's not very clean on it though, so it doesn't want to grab the solder as well as I'd like. Yeah, that's like it. Oh, that's a good one. Have you ever been like soldering along and you get your solder stuck in it because you were too close? Your first instinct is take it and pull. And if you do that, that's going to pull your foil and your seam and everything. Simple fix. Just remelt it. Pull it away. That was a good one. Quiet all of a sudden, didn't I? this iron. Now that it's starting to cooperate, I've got it turned up to right now seven. I like working faster. I just tip cleaned up on it a little bit during break here. Go to solder the front side. You'll see how much faster I can go. Number one, because I've dealt with all the bubbles on the back side here. won't have that to deal with in the front. 
for a very, very slight amount. I'm going to go over here now. Where are we? Okay. So just this little corner left. I believe maybe a couple other seams over here on the side that I've missed. I'll take a gander at it and then flip her over and do the finish solder on the front. Whenever you're soldering, you really want to try to solder the whole thing in one day. You don't want to leave it, especially for more than a day. I really wouldn't even recommend that. Um, do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> because last night about 9 o'clock I couldn't stand it anymore. It's like I want to start soldering and so I started my project at like really late at bedtime. It's bedtime by that point. I'm old. But uh, finally I got, got it tacked and I don't remember. I don't even remember if I flat soldered it or not last night. I can't remember. I do know my body hurt though. There. This is where I left a bigger gap in the glass because I wanted it to be a stem. So I wanted a little thicker. Gap between my glass. So it would look like a stem. There's another problem there. And if you've patiently stuck through me with this, I don't know if I can zoom in enough. Where I told you that stem was, part of the foil is missing there. Oh, it's not going to let me on my stand that I've got. What I can do is put a little piece of wire along that very edge and solder it right in and the solder will jump to that wire and you won't have that weird little foil thing showing there. So that's a little trick and a little fix-it trick that we do sometimes when we're repairing things. I don't know if you can tell, but I really am moving a little faster with the soldering iron rather than the weller. Do they make a 900 degree tip? That would be interesting. A 900 degree 3 eighths inch tip. I can still feel that this tip is loosening up. Oh, I got to do some more work on it. Sometimes this is the back and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Hey, Psycho. Hello, Psycho. That's my cat. <laughs> we named her Psycho. Her real name is Squiggles. We adopted her way back when. And she had been in the animal rescue place for like four or five years. When, we, when uh, we brought her home, it was over a month. It was like six weeks before she would even be in the same room with us. So we called her Psycho. Plus she kind of like tends to stare at things that's not there. So 
Sometimes she just starts yowling for no reason. I don't know. Calling her babies or something that she doesn't have. So Psycho is a very appropriate name for her. She's like 15 years old now. Gosh. Never, never a problem. Doesn't get up on the counters. That's the coolest meow. She's got the proper, she's like a little English lady. She's just so prim and proper. When she meows, it's meow. Psycho. She was the left. All right, I'm finding some right underneath you. Underneath the base holding my camera. So this is finished soldering the back because I always do because I don't know if the back will be viewed now or in the future. So it's easier to do it now. It takes a little more time, takes a little more material, but in the long run I'm always glad I do. And stay away from the edge. You don't want to run your solder all the way to the edge because we've got the zinc to put on it yet. Look at all of that. Just come back looking at my lines. The line looks a little funky. I'm just going to remelt it. When you go back and fix things, make sure you're melting all the way through. You're not just writing your iron on the surface because that's what gives you those sharp points or bad spots. I think my tip just pulled out a little bit. Yep, it did. <laughs> See? I don't know if I can tighten it down or not with it hot. Oh, yes, I can. Okay. Almost done. So if you're getting bad solder lines, maybe your solder, your iron's not hot enough, or you're not using enough solder, or you're painting instead of melting. Anything else? There's a couple. through the line, melt through the line, come down, I'm going to pull off to take any extra. I'm not pulling off with the solder, I'm going at a 90 degree angle of it. is the best meow. I'm sorry. I had to show you. Okay. How's it look? Back. Finished soldered. I think it's done. I'm going to flip it over and finish solder the front. See you all in a while. I hope. I think my phone just died. I'm not sure. How do I end this? <laughs> Sorry. Where's my other iron stand? Here. 
Sorry, I'm going to have to plug my phone in real quick. Okay, see y'all.